welcome back. We are cooking with patience, and it's the Chef Sebi. And today we are going to try out homemade hot pockets, and we are going to use this poppy cat recipe that I saw online. When I looked at it the first time, I realized that I was not going to be using the pasta sauce uh, for my topping or filling. So I just went ahead and I decided to make a bechamel sauce. Now normally with the bechamel sauce, you would take the onion, simmer it, put it in another pot, make a white roux, remove it, add milk, reduce the sauce, strain it, and do all the other stuff for the China Cat, but I didn't have time for that. So I just went ahead, I grabbed my saucepan to go ahead and to put the eight ounces of butter in there. And then I decided to let that butter melt down uh, how it's supposed to be. I did not have uh, chopped up onions. So I went ahead and I used the ones that came out of my refrigerator as well as um, some garlic. And I decided to go ahead and start stirring that around. In the video, this is not my hand, it is my husband's because I had dropped flour all over the place and I had to get him to come and help me out uh, while I <laughs> just clean up the mess that I made. Yeah, and sometimes during the first like experience of a recipe, things go wrong, you know, and that was just a small thing that went wrong for me. I went ahead, let those ingredients incorporate just enough so that I can get ready to start adding in my flour. You add in your flour, you're gonna continue to stir, 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 stir. Um, this is, you know, your process of making the roux, of course. So just stir, 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 stir. Because that is, you know, your flour and your butter. All right, so you see milk, and then we're gonna continue to stir it around. We're gonna keep whisking it to prevent any bumps, and we're going to let it sort of come to a boil. You see, we're continuing to stir, 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 stir. Okay. And now we are adding in our teaspoon of nutmeg, which you see the sauce is starting to thicken up. And then you might not do this, but we do. We added in some Parmesan, which I'm going to insert the picture of the Parmesan that we use because it's like not like the, the regular kind. It's just the shredded kind that you can put in your refrigerator to make it taste better. Now, you wanna go ahead and start with your copycat recipe. I went ahead and I took the flour and I decided to uh, sift it. I just love sifting flour because things turn out better for me. Um, that way and then I ended up putting the flour into the bowl and I started cutting the butter in now that took me almost five minutes and then I started using the fork to go ahead and combine the ingredients to make it form a dough okay Make sure you get around the sides and stuff. And then once you form that dough, you're gonna put it in the refrigerator for an hour. What I did was I took the little sandwich bag and I pretend like I was gonna tie it up and I put it in the refrigerator and I put my little bread towel on top of it. The next part is just rolling out the, the um, dough. Of course, when you roll it out, it's not gonna be that great. You always see me using a cutting board and the reason why I'm using that cutting board is because that cutting board has the exact rectangular shape that I want. So that's why you see me using it. So I went ahead, I used that cutting board to um, continue to roll everything out, make sure you put down enough 
flour for this process. And then I went ahead and I grabbed my pizza cutter because I did not want to use, you know, one of my knives for some reason because I just didn't want my board scratched up. So I was able to use a pizza slicer, cut it into eight, and then I realized, hey, I need to get my my sauce. Like I didn't I didn't take my dough out after an hour. I actually let mine stay in there for three and a half hours. I don't know. Maybe that might have made it taste better. Not necessarily certain. But I was able to be you know, to do that. Um now the next part is just getting that white sauce. Take the white sauce, put it down, put your cheese on top, put your ham on top, put your pepperoni on top, whatever toppings that you're going to use. Okay? And then you're gonna fold them. After that, you have to put them on parchment paper, refrigerate it for 30 minutes. Something that I realized when I was folding was I did not cut off enough dough to make sure that these Hot pockets were sealed properly, so make sure that you have more than enough dough because I didn't do that. And then something else that I decided to do um, is I used my remaining dough to make a larger hot pocket for presentation purposes. I know the recipe said to go ahead and brush those hot pockets with milk and sprinkle the herbs on there. That is not what I did. I was not using milk, used the butter spray, butter spray, Walmart great value, and I used Italian seasoning, and I sprinkled it over the top, and then I put it in the Cuisinart on 400 degrees, just like the recipe said, for about 16 minutes, and I noticed that the hot pockets were starting to come apart, and more than enough dough, okay? And then for presentation purposes, I just went ahead and I used like a white dish and I took all the hot pockets that opened up and I actually put them down so that you couldn't see that they were open up. But then in one of the pictures, you could look closely and see that the cheese was coming out of the side. So this, you know, it wasn't really a hard recipe for the first time around. I recommend that anyone that's trying to make a hot pocket, go ahead and use the recipe from that site. And then you know you can follow the instructions that. So remember, we are picky with patience. Always remember that the first time around, it might not turn out right. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. Watch my other ones. And this is Steph. Chef Sammy. Now.